Wrong one. <laughs> wrong overlay. That's a that's an important thing to do right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first ever Session Zero. We're doing a Session Zero today for the new TTRPG that is actually still in development from Darrington Press and the team at Critical Role, Daggerheart. This is version 1.3. We just got some updates dropped on Tuesday, so there's still a little bit that we're all having to remember and learn, and we're all going to be learning it together. That is the whole point of this Session Zero. But before we get into the meat of things, my name is Ethan. I will be the Game Master trying to herd this collection of cats for tonight. I am joined by five wonderful people that I absolutely adore playing with, and I'm just going to go in a random order based off of what's on my screen. First up, we have Mav. Yeah! Welcome in, everybody. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm going to learn how to play a brand new game. Join me for the chaos. Join us for the chaos and hilarity and shenanigans. Stay hyped. That is the exact kind of attitude that I need you to bring into this game. So well done. Next up, in his first ever streamed game, but definitely not his first ever game, we've got Aaron. What's up, everybody? Very excited. Uh going to be learning this new system and we are ready to go yeah 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 third taking a break from gming to continue being a player we have maddie hello um i have no idea what i am doing daggerheart is completely new to me so please guide me ethan i am lost i'm gonna do my very best <laughs> fourth up my lovely bride who is in almost every single actually currently every single game that I run and has finally made the decision to say no to one in the future, but still in five at the moment, Lauren. I can be a mushroom person in this one. We're all incredibly so gonna, surprised. So I'm probably gonna do that. Um, but other than that, I, I watched the stream that they had. And I, I'm ready to figure out how to play a new game. And last but oh not God. last but not least, joining us from the Identico channel. First time playing a fantasy game together, so I'm very excited about this. Mallow. Hello everybody. Hope you guys are doing good tonight. I'm excited too. <laughs> Very excited to have all of you. This is going to be a little bit different and pretty informal. Uh, just so you all know, I'm going to try to run this exactly the way that, for the most part, I would run a Session Zero that we were having for a home game. If anyone has any questions about rules, feel free to throw them in the chat. We will do our best to answer. Maybe it'll make us look something up. It'll probably make us look something up. Um, additionally, this is, even though it's Session Zero, it's still an 18 plus stream. So just have to have that warning so no one gets upset. So before we get fully started, just a little idea of what the point of this Session Zero is, especially considering it's just a one-shot. But the point of this one-shot that we're running is to test this new system, so I really want to make sure that we're familiar with the basic rules, can create characters together, because even though we're going to be using the pre-written one-shot module from Darrington Press and Daggerheart, we're going to create our own characters because creating characters is a very important way of actually judging how clearly a game is written, how well a game is made. If you just play the pre-made characters, you're not getting the full experience. So we are going to start with all of that. Normally, in a session zero, I would go over lines and veils consent sheet and x card but i've played with all of these people i'm aware of i've <laughs> taken lines and veils and consent sheets from four of them and i know that we're not going to go anywhere near what we do in identico but still <laughs> it is still worth saying if at any point something happens that makes you feel uncomfortable as a player bad uncomfortable there's a difference between good uncomfortable and bad uncomfortable and if it crosses into the bad just do this, or send me a private message, and we will rework whatever is happening. 
But this story is that we're going to be telling is a pretty straightforward, classic little fantasy story. It will start with the five of you who have already been traveling together, finally making it to the forest you were heading to. A classic little trope. So we shouldn't be dipping into any dangerous territory. The one thing I do want to go over though, just because we've all played together online, but again, just want to go over basic stream etiquette. When using Discord and things like that, it's really easy to talk over each other. And it's really easy for quieter players to feel overlooked and to just stay in their shell. So a few things. First, just a general reminder of respect each other. Respect each other's time in the spotlight. Remember when you are in a scene, when you're not. Remember the principle of can versus should. Just because you can say something in that moment doesn't always mean you should. But another principle is hand raising. Going back to a grade school thing, if you have something you want to say, but one, you feel like you're getting talked over, two, it the spotlight is currently on someone else and you just want to make sure that I know to point that light at you later, just raise your hand, I'll give you a little Mav, I got you, and hopefully I will, if I forget, raise your hand again and call me an asshole. Uh, <laughs> but we want to make sure that everyone gets their time respected and gets to explore these fun little characters we're going to make in this cute little world. So with that out of the way, we are going to jump into talking about, and please, players, ask questions. I know we're streaming this Session Zero, which makes it a little bit weird, but I want you to treat it just as if we're not. So if you have questions about a rule, if you have any questions, please ask it. So, we are going to discuss some of the basics of Daggerheart. The core mechanic at the heart <laughs> of Daggerheart is called the duality dice. Two d12s that are visually distinct from one another. One of these will represent what is called your hope die, the other your fear die. Whenever you have to take an action that is in question, whether it will succeed or how well, or it might be dangerous, you'll have to make what is called an action roll. An action roll is rolling the two d12s, adding in any other relevant dice and modifiers, and seeing what the result is. You will add both d12s together along with any modifiers and additional dice. You may have played some dice pool systems where you choose the highest result. That's not how this one works. You choose you combine the numbers together. However, which die rolls the highest does matter. So, if let's say you're trying to pick a lock a fairly, a moderate level lock. So I might set the difficulty to be 15. So, would roll both of these. Phew, not a good start for me. I rolled a four on the hope die and a two on the fear die. Even if I had good modifiers, I probably still fail. But because the hope die was the highest, what you would say is, I rolled a six with hope. You don't need to. Please, please for my sanity. Don't go, all right, I got a four on the hope die, a two on the fear die. Please do the addition yourself and just tell me the total and which was higher. That's all. So this brings us to what that matters. First of all, whichever of the two dice is higher, it generates one of two resources. Hope, which is a resource you get, or fear, which is a resource I get. Each player can have up to five hope points at a given time, and they can be spent on different things. We'll get to what those things are in a second. The GM can have up to ten fear points at a given time. So. Let's say that I had, or let's start at the best possible result. Any result of doubles, even snake eyes, 
is a critical success in Daggerheart. So, 1 in 12 chance. I'm really curious to see if they change that later, because that seems really high to me. Um, but, we'll see. So, any double result. 1, it's a critical success. 2, it counts as rolling with hope, so you get a hope point. And 3, if you have stress currently, it clears one stress point. So, critting is great. So that's the best possible result. Any questions about that one? So I I, I have a question. Hit so me. More of a just clarification. When I roll both my dice, because I just I rolled it for shits and giggles. I rolled, and I'm I'm only saying this because you said not to, but I'm going to get it out of my system. Hit now. me anyway. I rolled a twelve. I rolled a twelve on my hope die and a one on my fear die. So I would have say I rolled thirteen with hope. Correct. Whichever die okay. rolled the highest is the mm -hmm. with blank part. Got it. And the total between the two is the number. Got it. Yeah. Any other questions on that topic? No? All right. So that is the best possible result. The second best possible result is a success beating the difficulty score and having your hope die, roll the highest. So this means success. You were trying to pick the lock? You do. You also get a hope point, assuming you don't already have five. So that one's pretty straightforward. Any questions about that one? Cool. The next result in order would be a success, but with fear. So let's say, again, that DC was 13, and you roll a total of a 15, but you got a 10 on your hope or on your fear die and a 5 on your hope die. So that is a success with fear. The way this works is you get what you wanted, but there's a complication. Now, Daggerheart makes it very, very, very clear in their rules that the complication should not undermine your success. If you're trying to pick a lock, the complication can't be another lock falls in place fuck you um uh, i mean it could but probably probably not the best policy so what would happen in that case a better example is you succeeded in picking the lock but you managed to trip an alarm or you break your uh lock pick Maybe it takes a long time. Or nothing bad might happen at all. I might choose to have no complication, and instead I would just keep that fear point for later. The worst, or the second worst possible result is a failure with hope. Like I rolled, where I got a 5 on my hope die and a 2 on my fear die. I failed, but I rolled with hope. It's still a failure, but you get a hope point. So that's nice. And the worst possible result is a failure with fear. Things went bad. So that is, not only did you not get what you wanted, but there was also a complication. So not only did you fail to pick the lock, but the alarm was tripped. Not only did you fail to pick the lock, but it set off a trap. So those are the basics of the successes and failures in with the duality dice. Any questions about that? Questions, but the, the range in this system is for only having 2d12 is so broad. Yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> uh, it it's, I really like games that involved mixed successes. That's one of the things that I think D&D &D lacks is sometimes it's too much of a binary. Yes. So now obviously a DM can still say if you get between a 10 and a 15, that'll be a mixed success, but that's a homebrew rule. I love the complications and mixed successes. I'm very excited to see how that works. One thing that they updated this time is how advantage and disadvantage works. In the previous one, you added a D6, but now what it is is you would roll your standard hope and fear die 
but you would actually roll two hope dice. You can either do this the fast way by having a third die, or you can um, roll the hope die twice. And it's not take the highest, it's take what you want, because there could be a strategic value, like, for example, if you rolled your hope die twice, one was a 12, one was a 3, but the result on the fear die was also the 3, you, might, you would want to choose the 3 so you get the critical success. With disadvantage, you take the lower of the hope die, flat out. Which still means it can crit. You can still crit in that situation. Um, uh, Smallville in chat, we should have redeems on. I'm definitely fine with uh, flower power while I explain this. Just don't get me too blitzed to be able to explain the rules. <laughs> let, dad under, let dad tell us what to do first, <laughs> then dad can go get high. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, son. Uh, so that is the duality dice system. You're going to be using that a lot. Interestingly, as a, in my opinion, very interesting decision that I'm still trying to fully understand why, the GM never rolls duality dice. The GM still uses a d20. The listed reason is because the d20 is swingier, so it goes crazier. So I'm interested to see how that works. But that is the duality dice system. Next part. Now you've got hope points. What can you do with them? So there are three general ways that players can use hope. One is to use the ability help an ally. Actually, uh, what I'm going to do here really quick is find what page this is on so that I can just have it going in the stream. Give me one second, friends. Mm, using hope. Well, oh, Dad looks for it. I'm just really excited to play with all you guys in the new yeah. system. And yeah. I'm excited for everybody out there to see us struggle. We gonna yeah. struggle. Oh. So oh. <laughs> 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 out of it and fun little moments. We're here. Together. All right, hold on one sec. Let me get this going. Here we are. Turn that off. And. My hold on, hold on. I have it here. There we go. Now we can actually look at the rules together. Isn't that neat? Okay, so for those of you following along in the rule book on page 90, or you can look on the stream using hope, there are three main ways help an ally. So you spend a hope point to help an ally who is about to make an action roll where you could feasibly, in the narrative, help them. When you do this, describe how you're going, how you're helping, roll your hope die. This lets your ally choose between your hope die result and their hope die result. So it gives them advantage. It's just more mechan more dice-wise fun because you get to roll it instead of them. So that just costs one hope point. Easy peasy, nothing to it. Option two, utilize an experience. We haven't talked about experiences yet, but experiences are something you come up with during character creation. It's literally talking about your character's experiences in life that might be beneficial. You might say something like swashbuckler. And if you are then attempting to do something that you feel that experience is relevant on, you can first try to sell it to me, and then if we're good, you can spend a hope point to add that modifier to your action roll. So if you had Swashbuckler plus two and you were trying to hijack a sailing ship, you could easily say, I'm going to use my experience as a Swashbuckler, pay a hope point, add two to the result of your roll. Make sense on that one? The last one is activate a hope feature. These are usually class features. They will specifically say in the description, either hope feature or spend one hope to do blank. So those are just a general type of feature. 
So those are the ways that you can spend hope. I can spend fear in kind of similar ways, but just know fear is my resource. I can use it to do a lot. Mav. So, in layman terms, when it comes to utilizing experience, it's just a flashback. We're just using flashbacks, per se. Kinda. I mean, that's a totally fair way to think about it. You're using life experience in a current yeah. scenario. You know? Sure. And that's very cool, I think, in a from a storytelling and TTRPG perspective. Dune, the TTRPG, does something similar, where part of your history, if what you're doing is relevant to that part, Art of your history, you get to add additional modifiers. So it brings who you are and what you are into synergy, which is re really cool. I do very much appreciate that little feature. All right. So that is the basics of fear, hope, and the duality dice. Any questions about any of that from the chat or from the crew? No questions on that one? Oh, got to redeem flower power. Hey, hey. Anyone else can if you want. It ain't it ain't legal in our state. Mine's in the other room. That's a damn shame <laughs> for both of you. Let me just reach down and grab this real quick. Oh my god. Ah, oh, fine, that'll do. We both, we both got really excited because in four years of knowing Aaron, he has not partaken of the inhalable in front of us. One day. I thought he was going to pull out day. a giant bog. I was like, okay. So funny, dude. I was about to have some mad respect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me see if they have a... They don't have a... At least in this sheet, they don't have this character sheet. I don't think. Let's see which other rules need to be talked about right now. I don't think there are any that really need to be talked about right now. I think there are a lot that we'll be able to do during the character creation process. So, let me check my notes, make sure I'm not missing... Oh, one thing that is really important to Daggerheart is there is no hard initiative order when it comes to combat. The way it works is you all kind of go in what order seems narratively appropriate. The GM typically doesn't act during combat until one of two things happens. You fail slash roll with fear. That's normally a sign that time for the GM to take a turn. The second situation is when the GM spends a, a fear to interrupt you all. Which basically is like, oh, you all have been having a lot of successes in a row. I need to go. Until that happens, though, you all do your actions in the order that seems right to you all. That means Lauren's character could go once, then Mavs, then Lauren's again, then Aaron, then Mallow, then Mav again, then Maddie. Notice that some people went twice there. And some people went once. That's not against the rules in Daggerheart. Now, one of the concerns that I immediately had with this is what about quiet, shy, less strategic players who feel inclined to sit back and let everyone else go? Well, first of all, in this most recent update, they did release an alternate rule of bring back hard initiatives and just do it that way the other thing that they have is a thing called the action tracker we're going to try in hours using that because we know hard initiative and how it works so want to see how this works and this is far from the only game that has no hard initiative order there are lots but the way the action tracker works is whenever you take an action you put a little token representing yourself on the action tracker. Those of you playing at home or online, this can be anything from printed out tokens of your character's art to just 
poker chips of different colors for each different player. The point of it is twofold. One, those little... A yes, Captain America works too. Those little action tokens become a resource for the GM to spend. I can activate, aka take a turn, with an enemy for one of those action tokens. Actually, I think it's for two of them. No, it's for one of them. Um, so those become a resource for me to use against you in combat. The second purpose of the action tracker is a visual representation of who's been doing the most. So if we suddenly see that Mallow has four things on there, and, you know, Lauren has three, and Mav has three, and Aaron has three, but Maddie only has one... I may then force the camera back that way towards Maddie. Or other players can do the same, being like, I, I've got a lot on here. What about you? That's totally fine, too, because, again, you all are working together to figure out who goes when. So that type of discussion, utilizing the action tracker, is totally valid. It's not metagaming to say who wants to go next. That's built-in strategy that they want you to utilize. Make sense? Any questions about the action tracker and or initiative system? Cool. We have some once we get going. In. All right, cool. In that see, case, see let's go ahead and jump over to using Demiplane. So I have a window of it open here so that I can do it at the exact same time. If I could locate it. There we go. So, Demiplane is Daggerheart's answer to D&D &D Beyond, which it's a very smart thing that they made it because the number of times I have had players be pitched playing a new system, and they're like, oh, that system uh, sounds really cool. Does it have something like D&D &D Beyond? No, you'd have to do it on PDF or pen and paper. Uh, not gonna do it. So... And that's very much the future of TTRPGs. you got to have an online character creator that does it all if you want a lot of players to play. So over here in Demiplane, we can go to create a character, select Daggerheart, and then we get started. Let me know once everyone is on the Getting Started page. I see one, I see two. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> I think I'm on the right one. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you should see if it's anything like mine that you can see uh, in the uh, in the stream. If you want to make sure over here on the left, we have getting started, class, heritage, experiences, and all of that. You can choose a pre-made character if you want, but I figure we're not going to do that. If you want to hold off on your character name and pronouns for right now, that's fine because you should probably choose who you're going to be before the name. You are going to be level one for this. So let's jump. Would you guys rather, there's no reason we have to go in this particular order. Do you want to choose your heritage, what D&D &D calls race or species, or do you want to choose class first? I would like to figure out what my body is first. Before that I makes sense. That's yeah, one of the problems that I had when I did the play test of this for character creation was yeah. like, I don't want to pick my class until I know what I'm going to be yeah. from a species kind of thing, you know? So. Yeah, I don't know if there is a best order because there are also going to be people who want to pick their class before they pick their heritage. Eh, honestly, do it in whatever order. Class, because honestly, you pick a class and you're like, you know, narratively, like you as a player could come out. I was like, hey, I can figure out how to spin this to give you wings. I'll figure it out. Right. Let's go. Or, you know, power gaming. I'm going to play a wizard. Who, which heritage is best for that? And then pick afterwards. But for right now, for this one, let's jump over to heritage first. So heritage in Daggerheart is split into two aspects. Ancestry, your blood, and community your family 
But let's start with Ancestry because they're fun. There are so many awesome options here, very flavorful. Feel free to give them a look through, friends. I'm just going to be talking out loud, but until one of you, as soon as one of you interrupts, I will stop. We got the Clank, which is Daggerheart's um, Warforged. Sentient mechanical bean beings built from metal, wood, stone, clay. Damon, demon, daemon. Not sure which pronunciation they want to go with there. But <laughs> this is uh, if you could if you couldn't tell from this art what the D and D equivalent is, they even made them purple. Just as a, <laughs> this is obviously a tiefling. They could have picked any color other than blue it, <laughs> for Jester. But so there's that. And you'll notice, first of all, one thing to point out for those watching and those playing. Everything is described using cards. That's because Daggerheart utilizes a card assistance system. The cards aren't necessary to play the game. Just like spell cards and wild shape cards that exist for D&D aren't necessary to play the game. They're just helpful visual and tangible reminders for those who benefit from things like that. So you don't have to print these cards off, but you certainly can if that's something that's helpful for you and your table. Each one of the ancestries also has a feature or two Fearless for the demon, daemon, damon. See, I don't know. <laughs> All three are valid with that spelling. I, I think is. they're using daemon. I think like, they're doing daemon. Yeah. From what's the what's the one with the polar bear? Uh, golden um, compass. Yeah, that one. There's the dracona, the dragonborn, who get a breath weapon, dwarf, who are dwarves, elves, who are elfin. Fairy, Fawn, Fearbulg. It's interesting to see which ones of these apparently aren't under copyright. <laughs> Elf and Dwarf, yeah. that I knew, but Fearbulg I did not know was uh, free license. Fucking free use. I, the, the OGL was very enlightening when we went through it this year. I also had a bit of dyslexia just now. <laughs> reading fun girl and just read fun girl i was like well that's a very specific an i my ancestry is i'm a fun girl yeah <laughs> what i'm gonna do <laughs> like, uh. I, um so fun girl the myconids from D, D mushroom people galapa mm -hmm. think can you figure that one yeah they're tortoises or turtles giant which is really cool. <laughs> you can be a friggin' giant flat out. Goblin, halfling, human, Katari, tabaxi. Orc. I'll give you one guess what a ribbit is. It is not a rabbit. It is not. <laughs> it's, it's not. A, it's a cute, it's a cute bully wug. It's a little bully wug. And the one thing that they have, genuinely, anyone correct me if I'm wrong, I think the only actual playable species that is unique to Daggerheart. I'm not sure if you if was Myconid ever added as an actual official playable species for D&D 5e. Not that I can remember, like think of, I don't think so. It if not, if it isn't, then the Fungril and the Simia are the two the only two that are actually unique and available in Daggerheart that are not available in D&D 5e. And Simia are monkey people. Or well, ape people. They, they were. They were, but then they took it away. So they had to fix mm -hmm. it. Yep. Oh, um, so, <laughs> so, have people chosen? Are people debating? Do people want to discuss amongst to see if anyone wants to be two of a kind? I have four that I can choose from, but I want to hear everybody else's. The fairy. Because they're cute. I was uh, eyeballing the clank. 
Okay. All right. All right. Lauren, what you looking at? Hongo, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What you, Mallow? Uh, I let the die. Uh, I let the die roll a d20 yeah. and took off the one and the twenty. Okay. Uh, and and uh, and there are error. I think it's the one in the through there. There's eighteen, if I counted correctly, uh, ones, right? Yep. Uh, and I rolled an eighteen. So guess what? That makes me. Human? Nope. I'm a be a monkey. Yeah. I'm a simia. Okay. If that's the case, then your boy's gonna be your ribbit. <laughs> and I will. I will say okay. this. This is why. This is why. Because one of my favorite RPGs of all time is Chrono Trigger, and my boy Frog is a triple OG. The best homie you, in the game. You didn't get enough of Bullywogs after eight sessions in Wild Beyond the Witchlight dealing with nothing but Bullywogs. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to be a Bullywog so bad. It's infected you. So, you really quick, sure? since we've got one of each of these, let's take a look at their little abilities. The Simia, you have advantage on agility rolls that involve balancing and climbing. Also, add plus one to your evasion at character creation. Perfect opportunity to say what evasion is. It's your armor class. It is functionally identical to an armor class. The freedom of, uh, the narrative freedom of Daggerheart does encourage you all to, especially when choosing your class, think about what evasion represents specifically for you narratively. Are you dodging? Are you blocking? Is it an arcane barrier? Make it yours. But that is what that, uh, that is their ancestral ability. Ribbit gets two. You can breathe and move underwater just as easily as land. And long tongue. Grab onto things close to you. Can also mark a stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon that deals D12 physical damage using your proficiency. Okay, so there are horrible. there are a few things in here that we can discuss. First of all, I'm not sure if the word close here is actually using the mechanical close, but I want to go ahead and use this just as an opportunity to discuss the ranges in this game. So, let's jump back over to the rule book here and find... Well, he does that. We almost... You almost got Godzilla, because it was the dra the Dragonborn was the next one. I was like, either I'm getting to be in a rab... Or be in a frog, or Godzilla of some sort. So, ranges are on page 103. In the most recent update, Daggerheart went from only having the ranges defined in a relatively nebulous way to also giving you a more tactical specific one if you are someone who wants to play a more tactical game with a gridded map. But there are six general categories. There is melee right next to you, within five feet. Very close, the next five feet, five to ten feet away. Close, 10 to 30 feet away. Far, 30 to 100 feet away. Very far, 100 to 300. Out of range, very, very, super mega far, like half mile. If we want to think of it in terms of grids, if that helps your brain, melee is one square, very close is three, close is six, far is 12, and very far is anything beyond that. Okay, so I think looking at the wording of the long tongue, it says close. I'm not sure if that's the colloquial use of close or the mechanics use of close. This is one of the problems with using really common words as the title of a mechanic. But assuming that's true, you can grab onto anything within 30 feet of you. I mean, it makes sense. Pull a man, pop him. Second thing here is, again, stress. Stress can happen when bad things happen to you. You can also choose to inflict it on yourself to do certain things like that ability. Each character has a certain number of stress points. They can be removed during short and long rests, and 
once you have, let's say you have four available stress points, if you've already taken all four and you would take a fifth, it becomes a point of hit point. It takes away a hit point, which functions very differently in Daggerheart than in D&D, just so you know. Does it reset the stress if you take the hit point, or does it stay full? No, it stays full until you do something that removes it. So if you then take another stress point, that's another hit point. All right, so we have a Simia and a Ribbit. Anyone else know? Know what we're playing? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm going to play the fairy. Ooh, okay, I forgot. He was a fairy. Fairy, 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 fairy. So, let's take a look at that. I assume they can fly. They can. Oh, interesting, though. You have to mark stress to do it. It's not something that you can simply do all the time. Mark stress to take flight for a number of minutes equal to your level. While flying, your evasion score increases by one. That's a very cool way to handle that. Luckbender. Once per session, after you, you or an ally in close range makes an attack roll, you can spend three hope to allow a re-roll of the duality dice. Nice! That's cool. And it's after. But that's a once per session ability, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so we have a fairy, we got a ribbit, and we got a simia. Aaron, Lauren, what about you two? A mushroom. Oh, duh. Of course. Why did I ask the question? You know, yes. I, I know, I know, I know. So you are a fun girl. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm never I going to unsee it now. But, well, I hope you're a track. Oh, God, please oh, not. Coming. Please no. Um, Circle of Life. This is one they just updated. And I think this is very thematic. You can draw the last life essence from the recently deceased. When within very close, five to ten feet, range of a creature who marks their last hit point and dies. Spend two hope to describe what death ritual you perform and uh, heal a hit point. I'm gonna suck out their breath. Oh, oh. Their okay. All right, hold breath. it, hold it. Save, hold on to it. Jesus, gross. Uh, <laughs> all right. Aaron, I assume you've known for weeks, so. I've had ideas. But I didn't go too overboard, but we're going to go with the clank. Oh, okay, fun. So let's double check that ability one more time. Decide who you were created by and for what purpose. When you generate your experiences at character creation, choose one that reflects this purpose and increase it by one. Cool. That's cool that one of the class features requires you to develop background. I like that. All right, so everyone has their ancestry chosen. So now we can move over to community. Lots of different options here. Nine, nine different communities that I can see. Highborn, Loreborn, Orderborn, Ridgeborn, Seaborn, Slyborn, Underborn, Wanderborn, Wildborn. So I'm just gonna pull these up so everyone can see while you all are choosing. Highborn, I think we know. Underborn. I think we know what that is. Oh, Lauren has already picked hers. Underborn. Being part of an underborn community means you're from a subterranean society. Low light living. When you are in an area with low light or heavy shadows, you have advantage on roles to hide, investigate, or perceive details within that area. Very nice. I would like to choose Seaborn. I'm a little lad from a from an island away with special fruit. Know the tide. When you roll with fear, put a token on this card. Before you make an action roll, you can spend one or more of these tokens to add them as a plus one modifier to your roll. Huh. Just sensing the ebb and flow of life. That's really cool that's really cool so every time you roll with fear you get a plus one modifier to use or if you keep those until the end of the session you can bank them as hope for the next session because hope and fear points both roll over 
That's a really, really cool feature. Uh, I'm going to go for Wildborn. Wildborn. You live deep within the forest. That seems fitting. Advantage on rolls to move without being heard. Perfection. Got Wanderborn. Uh, I was thinking Wanderborn. Love that art. First of all, the art on these cards. Great job, artists. Is that a capybara, a giant capybara for the Wanderborn? Do you want it to be? I want it to be a giant capybara. Then it is now. Yeah. <laughs> the beauty of TTRPGs and collaborative storytelling. Wanderborn. Capybara, capybara. Nomad. At the beginning of a session, randomly choose a different community card. Oh, cool. So you get to randomly, for every session, gain the benefits of a different community. I dig it. Wicked. I, uh, I'm, I'm building this character in my head now All right. based, on, based on this, so now I'm going Slyborn. Slyborn, okay. Underbelly. Scoundrel. You have advantage on any roles to negotiate with criminals, detect lies, or find a safe place to hide. So, with all these things that have been mentioned, roles to investigate, move silently, all of that, now seems a good time to talk about how those work. Let me get to... here we go. Unlike in Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, and a number of other games, there aren't skills in this game. There isn't move silently, investigate, perceive, history, weird science, whatever. Instead, it is all simply associated with your experiences and your character traits. Character traits are just like attributes in D&D. You have agility, which covers things like sprinting, leaping, maneuvering, strength, lifting, smashing, grappling, finesse, Controlling, hiding, tinkering. Instinct, perceive, sense, navigate. Presence, charm, perform, deceive. And knowledge, recall, analyze, and comprehend. You might notice, those of you who are paying attention, that these are general and far from exhaust exhaustive lists. And you might easily be able to think of something that might fall in between one of them, or, or in between two of them, or multiple. In a situation like that, if I notice that it could be multiple, I might ask you and be like, I could see this being a finesse or an agility role, which do you think? I also might initially go that this is a finesse role, and you might say, is it possible to use agility because of blah, blah, blah? And if you can make the argument, we can roll with that. So that is how these rolling for all of those things work in Daggerheart. You don't have to worry about separate skills for all those different things. It would simply be a finesse roll to move silently. It would be a knowledge or... Uh, like, what would it be to investigate a place? Almost certainly be knowledge, I would think. But you could make the argument of instinct. Think? Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. <laughs> you could make the argument either way with comprehend. I guess that's, I guess knowledge is knowing the information or making sense of the information while instinct would be gathering the information. Or, for example, like how Lauren is from the Underborn. And we're in that area, and we won't know where to go, but she can just use her instinct of like, oh, no, it's that way. Yeah. Well, how do you know? I'm from here. Navigating <laughs> is absolutely instinct. That's one of the ones that they do specifically say. But there are going to be a lot of border cases. And figuring out what goes where is entirely art and no science. So feel free to say, would that make sense as this one? I may be swayed. I may not be swayed. But... Always feel free to make the make the pitch. 
All right, so I think everyone has now picked, and I probably need to just to be able to move on to the next phases. Uh, everyone has now picked an ancestry and a community, so let's move. Do people want to wait to name their characters? Is that something you want to think of? Over the when we take a little break, yeah, let's do that as a little break. So for yeah, right I, now, I then, name this boy yet. let's head over to classes. We've got nine classes at the moment in Daggerheart. Players, feel free to browse through them while I mention a few other things. Though keep your ears open. You'll notice that there, to the right of each of the classes. Like at Bard, it says Grace and Codex. And you can also find uh, Codex again in the Wizard. You can also find Grace again in the Rogue. Those are domains. Each class is affiliated with two domains. Which means there are a lot more combinations still left of the nine total domains. So lots of classes I'm sure will be coming. But that determines what abilities, domain cards, you get access to. You will also immediately, when choosing a class, get to pick your subclass. You don't have to wait until a higher level. You get that at level one. The important things to look at when you are looking at this, these different classes. One, you don't really need to know what their domains are right now, that's something that'll matter more to you as you learn the game more for later on. But the evasion score, your how hard you are to hit, everyone's... Okay. <laughs> so we're going to take a sec to take advantage to talk about damage thresholds, if we may. So, if you look at any of the classes, you'll see at the top right, it says damage thresholds. It then has three scores, minor, major, and severe. When damage is rolled during combat or whatever, when damage is rolled in Daggerheart, if, assuming it hit you, we compare the amount of damage to your damage thresholds. So let's say you're a bard, because that's the one I have pulled up. The damage thresholds are minor one, Major 6, Severe 12. Let's say the enemy does 5 damage to the Bard. That makes it minor, because it falls between 1 and 5. A minor hit, minor damage, deals 1 hit point worth of damage. If I had gotten between a 6 and an 11, that would be major, which deals 2 hit points worth of damage. Severe deals 3. I also want to implement, though I doubt it will be relevant in a level 1 campaign, that double the severe is the, like, I forget what word they used, but in very high damage, which deals 4 hit points. I highly doubt that will be relevant. So, looking at your evasion score to see how hard you are to hit, looking at your damage thresholds to see how hard it is for you to take actual hit point damage. Class items are just flavor, but it's fun. Your class feature is something you get access to immediately, so that is going to be the other thing you're going to want to look at when deciding which class you want to go with. I figured out what I what what I. You know what do. class you're going with? Yes. All would, right. Can I, can I say it? Absolutely, please do. I would like to be a warrior. Okay. Everybody would like to be a warrior. Warrior, starting evasion score yeah. of ten, minor one, major eight, severe sixteen. Class feature: battle strategist. Oh, cool! You can mark a stress to deal them a stress. Attack of opportunity. Get a bunch of class features. That's really cool. Did you choose which subclass? The options for Warrior are Call of the Slayer and Call of the Brave. 
You can take a sec to think about your subclass. Has anyone else picked their class? Yeah, Aaron. Lauren had her hand oh, up first. Lauren. I see you. I already jumped over what class you picked, though, Aaron, so. Might as well. Wizard? Oh, look at that. I just happened to be on Wizard. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Uh, crazy random happenstance. So, evasion eight, pretty easy to hit. Minor one, major five, severe ten, pretty easy to do damage to. Prestidigitation. Choose a number between 1 and 12. Whenever you roll that number on a duality die, gain a hope or clear a stress. You can change this number whenever you roll a long rest. This combined with the Nomad one is just so much random already, and it's only level 1. That's crazy. And That's what we about. I love how you've made wild magic without making yeah. wild magic. <laughs> um, also, things to note is... Each class has background questions just to get your brain moving, and I think that's a very smart thing to include in the game. We'll jump back for subclass. Lauren, do you know what class? Uh, I'm going to be a Nightwalker Rogue. Ooh, okay. Rogue. You get hide, sneak attack, got the background questions, Nightwalker. Play the Nightwalker if you want to use the cover of Shadow to navigate your environment. Very cool. Dang, you got so many features. That's awesome. Okay. Anyone else know what class they want? Maddie. Uh, I'm going to be a Primal Origin Sorcerer. Ooh, okay. Nine. Major... Minor 1, Major 6, Severe 12. You can just detect magic. You get Minor Illusion. Ah, could every, or not everyone, in case you're currently looking at yours, but on the stream you can see that it says under Minor Illusion, make a spell cast roll 10. So, the, where does it say? Ah, the way that will work is, that is an act. That is a roll using your duality dice. That is an action roll. And you will add to it the bonus from your spellcasting trait, which for both subclasses of Sorcerer is Instinct. So whenever Maddie's character wanted to do this, they would have to roll the 2d12s, add two, uh, or add whatever their Instinct bonus is before it could even successfully be cast. channel raw power and you said you were going with which origin a primal origin primal origin modify your spells in powerful ways when you cast a spell use a weapon that deals magic damage mark a stress to do one of the following meta magic extend its reach add two to the roll re-roll any number of damage dice hit an additional target yeah meta magic cool Hello. I had also gone with Nightborn Rogue, so yeah. now I'm gonna change. You could or Nightwalker Rogue. You could have uh, two. So Wait, really? Yeah. You could have two. I'm you a get very sneaky monkey. Here's the thing. You yeah, can have be two because with me. I think you'll be able to you could pick pretty different domain cards. There are only a few choices right now at level one, but I think you could still pick entirely different ones from each other if you wanted. If you wanted. Yeah, I, uh, he's being a very sneaky monkey. So are you going with that subclass combo too? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That is great. And that's actually really cool to be able to see how two very similarly built characters might be different with just a few domain card differences. Might also be a good reason for your two characters to either know each other or know of each other. So we now have classes chosen. We now have subclasses chosen. So now, the next thing to do, let me go ahead and catch up to everyone, is set your traits. You can pick one to have a plus two, one to have a plus one, another to have a plus one, and one has to have a minus one. The remaining two will be plus zero. If you are doing a spellcaster, 
definitely important to see what your relevant trait is. So, okay, I have a question about mm -hmm. the subclass thing. Because it's... God, both of these look so good. Call the Slayer and Call the Braver are so good. Yeah. Because... With Call of the Slayer, I can add a Slayer dice to add to my weapon attack, to my weapon attack or damage. Okay, or with Call of the Brave, if I fail a roll with fear, I gain a hope. Which you already but, have a thing that gives you something when you fail or when you roll fear in general. Yes, but Call of the Brave turns that bitch to a D twenty. <laughs> Damn. No, Smallville, I don't pick a character. I'm simply picking a character on the character creation so that I can show uh, what's going on. I I am all the characters minus five. So, like, we Call <laughs> the Brave, it says, like, if I have more than, if I have no more than two hit points, mm -hmm. slots unmarked, my hope dot becomes a d20 out the gate. Um, Which is interesting you... because mathematically... That reduces your likelihood of getting a critical. Mm -hmm. Does, but I feel this like That's it's a final gambit type of thing. But mastery feature is I have unbending courage is a rallying point for your allies. So you can initiate a tag team roll one extra time per session. Additionally, when an ally wants just to initiate a tag team roll with you, then you only need to spend two hope to do so. So, with this brought up, great opportunity just to talk about this little feature, which is called tag team rolls. Tag team rolls are something that you can, I believe it's here under action roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. Tag team rolls. You, the way this works is one of you will spend three hope points and the two of you will come up with a narrative description of what you guys are doing. What this does is you'll both roll and choose the best rolls um, between the two of you. You'll both roll your duality dice and choose whoever's you want to use. If you're doing an attack, you'll add your damage together. So you choose which you want to use to determine success, and then you add your total damage together. But each purse, each player can only initiate, as written, uh, a tag team roll once a session. With Slayer, I have mastery thing, martial prep, martial prep which uh, during downtime... I can use during a rest to instruct and train with your party, then give yourself and each ally a Slayer die, which is a D6. Allies can spin your Slayer dice or die to enhance their own weapon attack or damage rolls. And I can hold wield multiple weapons too. So I can spend a hope to add one weapon damage out of your secondary weapon. So I can hold two weapons? Well, sometimes, unless, you're, okay. unless your primary one is two-handed. But you can okay. hold two one-handed weapons, yeah. Okay. Well, let me know when you've picked. Checking in okay. with the rest of you. Has everyone set their traits? Any questions in the process? Cool. So, the next thing we will do is choose starting weapons. Actually, before we do that, I want to jump first to choose starting armor because I want to take advantage of this just to explain how armor works to you all. So, if you go to choose starting armor and you scroll down and you look at any of the armor that is available to you, all of them have an armor score. The way this works, unlike D&D, it doesn't add to your evasion. It is used to reduce damage, not make you harder to hit. So, on everyone's character sheets, you will have a certain number of armor slots. What this represents is how many times your armor can reduce damage for you before it breaks. 
So let's say that you have four armor slots and you're wearing a breastplate, which has an armor score of three. I roll to hit you. I beat your evasion, so I hit you. I roll my damage. I roll eight damage, which is a major wound for you because your thresholds were minor one, major six, severe 12. So because it was a seven or seven or eight, whichever I said, um, it's a, a major wound. So it would deal two hit points worth of damage to you. If you spend one of your armor slots, you can reduce the damage by your armor score. So in this situation, the armor score is three. So I use one of the armor slots to bring it down by three, making it five damage, which only deals one hit point. There is no limit to how many of your armor slots you spend at once. You can spend as many as you have available. So if on one attack, it did 20 damage, which would be three hit points worth of damage and would take you down, you can spend all four, have your breastplate armor break until you repair it, which you can do during rests, which is really cool, um, to reduce the damage by 12 by spending it four times. That is how armor is used in Daggerheart. You'll also notice next to the armor, it's a... Some of them have specific descriptions like stiff, minus one to your agility, um, heavy, minus one to your evasion, very heavy, minus one to both. So, feel free to choose your armor. For to live dangerously with leather armor, because I don't understand. I, well, I don't understand a rogue having a minus one to agility. That. I think that's a totally it's, fair. You know, it's suggested on here and stuff like that. I think it's suggested for everyone. Because I'm pretty sure oh, when okay. I was making a wizard, it suggested me the breastplate. Suggested okay. me that too. I'm like, okay. I think it's just like the armor. middle of the road thing. It's got middle yeah, amount of armor. Yeah. It's got only a minus one to agility. We're, we're gonna we're gonna rely on evasion here to try. Yeah. Not Smallville redeemed hydrate. You all should do it too, all my friends here. Oh. Good, 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 good. Thank you, Smallville. So then you get to, under starting weapons, you get to choose a primary and a secondary. Pretty straightforward on that one. What so what in, I do like... The one that I was looking oh, at, yeah. um, it was like dagger, dagger as your uh, starting weapons and stuff like that. And all, you can't do that twice. At least not in Demiplane, which I thought was interesting. Let me see about that. Select. Huh. Yeah, I can't figure out how to do it either. Yeah. That... Oh, maybe it's small dagger. Hold on. This is. I'm looking at the. I'm diving in. <laughs> Where is small dagger? For uh, turning blade too. Two? Oh, yep, sure enough. Small dagger, secondary weapon. That's how you do it. I'm not seeing small dagger. <laughs> okay, scroll down all the way to the bottom. I did. To page it, two, and, and it's... It's, a, it's under short sword. Yeah, right oh, under there short it is. Sword. Okay. Yeah, yep. interesting. So, dagger, small dagger. Because yeah. it's easier to use in your offhand. Plus two to primary weapon damage in melee. Nice. So that's that's how it gets taken into account. It's not that you make an attack with both. It's that it increases your damage on your attack. Clever. Which I think is kind of cool because you don't have to worry about hitting with the second one. And so it's yeah, it's faster. Fast. Let's just yeah. get the damage. Let's go. Let's go. So we've chosen weapons. We've chosen armor. Have we? Have we all? So say we all. So say we all. Um. You get to choose two uh, options here under, at least I do, in the rogue, under take starting inventory, minor health potion, minor stamina potion. Uh, 
And so the last thing we have to choose after those is your domain deck cards. You have six available to you at the beginning, and you choose two. These can be from both from the same domain or one from each. Some abilities let you change out what cards you have picked. You can also choose new ones. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Be able to choose another each time you gain a level. Yeah. Some abilities will let you swap a card you currently have out with one that's in your in the deck. But for now, let's pick two. Like the road. And you don't have to have one from Grace and No, like you can one have both right? from the same. From the you can okay. choose them from either. Like, the Midnight section of the Rogue is pretty cool. Uncanny Disguise. Rain of Blades. Two hope to conjure throwing blades that strike any enemies very close to you. Sweet. Pick and pull. Advantage on disarming locks. How are we all doing on that? Any questions about any specific ones? Part of me wants to just go full on longsword with this damn frog. Nothing wrong with longsword. But, uh, but part of me was like, I had a shield. I had a shield and a little cutlass. <laughs> we could be pirates together. Fuck yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. Uh, by the way, my subclass was um, Slayer. No, Brave. I went Brave. Just to answer a question that Smallville asked, being new to TTRPGs, are you all on the same team, or can there be some backstabbers just uh, and just doing stuff for your character? So, to answer that question in a general answer, usually if there's going to be backstabbing, that is something that needs to be cleared in Session Zero, just to prevent any outside-of-game frustrations. It's also very difficult to pull off well. I've seen it done. I know it can be done. Crit Roll did it. Um, but it is very difficult to do well. So it can happen, and you can definitely do a PvP game of everyone fighting against each other. The limit is your imagination and what you all are willing to go through. <laughs> Selena Darkmire, welcome into the chat, and, and Numis. So, has everyone gotten to pick their domain cards? Do you have any questions on any of them that are trying to figure out what it means so that you know whether you want to pick it? Lauren, which ones did you pick? Probably the exact same ones you picked. I was going to say, are we twinning? Are we probably twinning? I picked the... <clears throat> I picked the pick and pull and rain of blades. <laughs> well, that means one of you doesn't need pick and pull. <laughs> All right, I'm going deaf deceiver then. Deaf deceiver, spend a hope, take advantage yeah. on a roll. You make to deceive or trick someone into a lie, you tell them. Well, if everyone has... I'm still reading. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Dang, it's a bit complicated. I have, I'm trying to just feel, like all right. So I'm in my domain section now. Okay. I, my sword. I have a cutlass and a shield. I went that standard. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Whatever. Um. I'll make it work. Um. Then I'm looking at domain. First off, I ended up did get. I ended up. I ended up picking for the first one. Not good enough. When I when you roll damage dice, you can re-roll any ones or twos. Nice. That's super nice. Okay. But now it was like trying to get one blade and one bone. Um, I might go with Nimble. Uh, while this card is in your loadout, add half of your agility score to your evasion, round it up. That's or Whirlwind. Really nice. You may, when you make a successful attack against 
using a weapon with melee or very close range, you may also spend a hope die to use that roll against any other enemy in the weapon's range. So, any additional enemies you succeed against with this ability take half damage rounded up. So, the question ends up being, what type of warrior are you going to be? And this is one of the cool things about choosing abilities like this. It's what Pathfinder 2E does very well with their feats. There are so many more feats in Pathfinder 2E, and it's something you take a ton of, because you get to branch off and become a very different type of warrior than someone else who was a warrior but chose different cards. I feel like sometimes in 5e, you know, if you're an evocation wizard, you're probably going to be pretty similar to another evocation wizard. There, aside from the subclass branching, there isn't a ton of other branching. This gives you a lot. So choosing between Whirlwind and the first one, Nimble, I think you said it was, do you want to be tank, as in focus on me but don't hit me, or don't damage me at least, or do you want to be damage dealer? Now the question, uh, I think probably a better way to answer the question is just from a narrative perspective, which archetype are you? I already have not good enough with the blade, so if my damage dice rolls ones and two, so I want to be able to hit. But also, I'm a little frog. I'm a little. I'm a little guy. I'm hopping around, so we may end up doing nimble to be able to, to cause distraction, but also like, whoops, whoops, you didn't hit me. Too bad. Not getting hit is a very good thing. Because it's some... healed. You get some good synergy with the the tongue ability. There also, go. yeah. Stay far away. Yeah, Smallville even pointed that out. You got your tongue as a whip. Way to think. So, we've got most of us. I think have picked our domain cards, and you should have everything now cleared on the uh, class and heritage section. So for right now. When we come back, I would love people to at least have a placeholder name, and then we are going to deal with the experiences section. But the experiences section are very general. So just for right now, think of who your character is. And then when we come back here in just five minutes, that will make it a lot easier to pick your experiences. So friends on the stream, we're just going to go to the bathroom really quick so that we can continue on with this session zero. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Bye friends.
And we are back. So we pick up where we left off, which is dealing with the experiences section. So the first thing we have at the top is places for you to fill in details about what your character looks like specifically. You can do that over the course of the next few days if you don't want to do it now. But let's go through and uh, at least have people... Uh, yeah, answer those background questions that are presented there. You don't have to do full sentences. You don't have to do long form or anything like that. It's for you. And then we will get to the experiences. But knowing the background questions will probably help, uh, will make thinking of your experiences even easier. While they are doing that, let me get the Roll20 screen set up. Doing it live. So, has anyone finished answering any of the questions? Lauren, why don't you tell us one of the answers to one of the questions? Um, it says, who, who from that other life were you most sad to say goodbye to? Um, and I said, connecting mycelium, not having a place to plug into the matrix makes one feel alone and you eventually forget what it means to live with others. I like it. Maddie, I saw your hand. Sure. Um, one was who finally taught you to control the magic bursting from forth from you and why are they no longer able to guide you? And I just said the old wise ribbit of the lake named Gran. Um, sadly, she passed on a few years ago and I started journey, started my own journey. Who else has got one answered? Mav. Who taught you to fight and why do they stay behind when you left home? Captain Halfshell? Um, and the reason why they, I, that's a placeholder. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Halfshell, uh, had to go on a journey to find a legendary treasure and I left and he ended up leaving. So there you go. I spun that Well, he's not there anyway. So I left. Mallow or Aaron? It's a one, it's a one piece reference. <laughs> Go ahead, Aaron. Um, we'll do. What did your community use used to count on you for? How did you let them down? Okay. And his traveling community in the wastes needed to know the best way to traverse the shard wastes, and my character couldn't recollect or remember which way was the safest and took them down a dangerous path. Very nice. Malo? Uh, for me, I was answering the what did you get caught doing that you had to get exiled from your home or community. Um, and I say uh, was saying that my family angered the queen of our country. And so our family's noble home was taken and we were all to be arrested. Uh, but I left on a ship never to be seen again. I like it. So, you all can continue to answer those background questions if you want. No obligation, they're just springboards 
for thinking about who you are. But what I want to jump to next is choose your experience. This is a very important part of Daggerheart's system, because like we talked about, you can spend a hope point to leverage an experience. But what's interesting is there is no set list of these are the things you can choose from. There are tons of examples, however, if you scroll down just slightly. But before looking at that, uh, the third non-italicized paragraph. There's no set list of experiences to choose from, though some examples are offered below. Instead, choose a word or phrase that embodies something distinctive about your character. They should be specific. For example, talented or focused are too broad as they can be applied to almost any situation. You might use swashbuckler, magic studies, or things like take flight, or one hit kill. Or no, uh, those are too specific, and you might consider something like acrobatics or assassin. So we want not too vague, but not too specific. So again, if we scroll down and just look at the examples, your experience can be a background, con artist, scholar, runaway, a characteristic, sticky fingers, intimidating presence, stubborn to a fault, silver tongue, can be a specialty, navigator, sharpshooter, survivalist, a skill, tracking, deadly aim, fast learner, or just general phrases like, I won't let you down, or never again. Knowledge is power. No one left behind. So take a second to think about these. You, at level one, get two experiences. One which you can put up to a plus two, and one which is at a plus one. Very cool way as a system to tie your who you are, your backstory, to what you are, your character sheet. Anyone so, have any thoughts? Yeah, Maddie. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got uh, Nature's Friend, Thanks. which I just took from the examples, That's and perfect. then the one that... I kind of went on my own. I said gentle touch. I like it. Those are perfect. We're going to be a pirate. Those are perfect examples. And what were you saying, Mev? So, swashbuckler. What else? All right, I'm not. Uh, cool handshake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, Which trying to cheat. I our very face. much <laughs> would love you to have your experience be cool handshake. And I would oh. very much enjoy seeing you <laughs> leverage that. Hey, this is a social oh. situation. If I like give him my cool handshake to make him Look, like me, remember, like <laughs> Listen, everyone if anyone's ever watched community, there is such thing as a cool handshake. I'm not I'm, okay. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm letting people know. Oh uh, no, it's um um a uh, friend to all. Very cool. Perfect. Great examples. Anyone else have any ideas? Lo. I got a couple things. Okay. Um, we gotta flexible. narrow it down. I'm flexible. Is that the phrase? Um, no. Oh. Uh, ruthless killer. Ooh. Okay. An unhinged speech. Unhinged speech. I'm not sure what to make of that, and I'm okay. Do you make it? I don't know. Um, She's gonna say Donnie, something out of pocket. Like Donny War, Donny Thornberry, unhinged speaks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, children. any manifestation of speech I'm, that's probably not how people would usually converse. I'm very <laughs> interested to see how you leverage it. Cool. You can also, if you want, just an idea, you don't have to. You could even take the word killer off of there and just have it be ruthless, which would be a perfect description. But if you think it's specific to no, I like it. in fatal situations and maybe super compassionate outside of that, who knows? Just an idea. 
Aaron? So, I might need some better terminology. We got a whole crew here. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking the main one, because as a clank, you need to decide who created me and for what purpose. Right. I figured that out. Okay. And you were supposed to make one of your experiences be related to that, right? Yes. So that one I'm trying to... Right now I've got experiences knowledge. So trying to recollect, remember past things, which is kind of just an experience in general. But experience is knowledge. Was, was is, that one from the list? They've got a knowledge is power. Experience is knowledge. I, my concern with experience is knowledge is that feels like talented or focused in that you can apply it to a lot. Mm -hmm. Like almost, at, I have experience with that, so I have knowledge of it. Oh, I, you do? Um, so I would like to see that made a little bit less uh, broad. Adaptable? Adaptable? Um, I'm thinking like, I'm, okay, in my terms of adaptability, I'm thinking of like how Mega Man, whenever he kills another person, or like kills the robot master, he gets their abilities and can use them as time goes on, or you learn stuff from us as a party to use to your advantage. You learn from us as you're going on because your ability as a clank, you have the, the ability to, to background to wherever we're from, like the seaborn and all that stuff. You can pick from us. Ooh, I, what about like, um, reflection? Like a mirror, Reflection. something to something to do what a party member has done in the past. Oh, and use it to help, kind of thing. Mimicry, mimicry. Yeah, mimicry. that's that one. That I'm totally like, works. I know that word because that I was nervous about adaptable because. I feel like it, that's very adaptable to uh, most situations. Um, but mimicry, that's very specific. Or even copycat might be another phrase for the same thing. I mean, a phrase that just sounds cool is mechanical mimicry. Mm, you, you got, I mean, everybody yeah. loves some good alliteration. I'm going to for mimicry. that alliteration. We're all here. Maddie's Mechanical Mimicry. Oh, TM. is that the name of your creator? Nice. No, it could be. I already had one. It's not all that far off, though. Okay. Just do the autocorrect version of mine, Marty. So that's one. <laughs> the oh, other one. And Rothengator, Redeemed Hydrate. Stay hydrated, friends. I know not one of you here is drinking a gallon of water a day, so you can afford maybe shrouds. <laughs> you, you can kiss my ass. <laughs> hey, hey, if a little bit of antagonism gets you to keep hydrating, then I'm okay with it. I'll bully you into staying hydrated all damn day. Oh, and I just realized that because of the way my screen is cut, I haven't gotten to show this. Nice. I love this design so goddamn much. <laughs> I have it in both t-shirt and tank top. That It's a sickness. It's okay. Has everyone said both of their experiences? I need to do the second one still. All right, let's I do it. Which I think will just be small friend. Small friend? friend? Cool. Friend of little creatures. Cool. I dig that. If anybody's got cooler names, I'm open to all of that. <laughs> <laughs> friend of the small, because that also that applies to small creatures and small folk, like gnomes, mm -hmm. halflings, all of that. Even though friend uh, of the small was a gnome a rapes that was available, <laughs> or a he ancestry kind of. No, it's just halfling and goblin. Halfling, yeah. pretty straightforward i'm doing con artist and swashbuckler because i perfect I went back i went back and changed just a little bit i'm gonna be a little syndicate in oh, that particular one you went I with syndicate on my head 
Yeah, we got a little uh -huh, idea in my head. Uh -huh. So now we got we got we got the balance of the rogues going on. Uh, and now you make me want to go back and play Assassin's Creed Syndicate now. Like, damn, <laughs> shit was cool. <laughs> All right, so we got both of those chosen. So now what I want us to do is the next one, which is create connections. So here is what I would like. You all have been traveling together. You all have had experiences together. So really quick, everyone get out a D4. So, each of you should have three questions. I don't know if they're different from class to class. I'm currently a rogue, and my three questions are, what did I recently convince you to do that got us both in trouble? Is that the start? No, they're different. Okay, they're different. Very cool. I assumed they would be, but just wanted to confirm. So, in order to make it so that you all establish connections with different people, Lauren, we're going to start with you. Could you roll me... Your D4. Your first question. What is it? Huh? Your first question under Create Connections. What is it? Oh, it's what did I recently convince you to do that got us both? Because you're a rogue. That's yes, totally fair. I'm a rogue. Um, that one is going to be between you and Mav's character. <laughs> Roll me a d4 again. This is how we're going to do it for everyone so that you establish connections with different people. Three. What is that question? What have I discovered about your past that I hold secret from the others? That is Maddie's character. One more roll. That is, <laughs> that is uh, Aaron's character. What are you desperately trying to teach me that you fear I'll never understand? All right. So keep, take note of who those are with. And I'll give you all the choice because I know we do have different time zones and things like that. Are, do people want to discuss these connection ideas outside of this so that you have the rest of the weekend to talk about it rather than trying to come up with it here or do you want to do it on the fly right now fuck do it on the fly Let's do it live all right fucking live well that first question lauren and uh mav could you repeat the question what did i recently convince you to do that got us both in trouble Something dumb and rude. We stole from a shopkeeper. <laughs> there you go. We stole from, we stole from a shopkeeper. Um, and it's one of those one things where didn't know what was happening. You just told me to pay or put it in your pockets, put it in your hands, and fucking run. <laughs> and what's great I like is that thing you should take it. That is as much detail as you need because you can come up with the agreed upon history on the fly as it if it ever makes itself relevant so that was question one well done second question the one that was to maddie what have i discovered about your past that i hold secret from the others um that my family and those i grew up with were all my imaginary friends And last question to Aaron. What are you desperately trying to teach me that you fear I'll never understand? Magic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm trying to teach you what it's like to have another creature almost symbiotically rely on you. All right, so Lauren, make note of those. Those of you who gave answers, remember them, because they can be fun for roleplay in the one shot. We're going to move over to Mav. 
Could you roll me a d4 for your first question? One. That is you and Mallow. What is that question? I uh, can't hear you. How do we? How did we know each other long before this party came together? I'm so happy. I'm so happy you got that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next one. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. we'll go through them all so that people have time to think. We'll go through them all. So, roll the next one. Three. Three? Mm -hmm. That is Maddie. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is going to be bad. What mundane thing off the battlefield do you usually help me with? And one more roll. I love this. The system heart has something like this too, sure. like with suggested questions, depending on your class and heritage. I think it's so helpful. Four? Mm hmm. Perfect. That is you and Low. All right, Lolo. All right. No, you made me steal some shit. What fear am I helping you to overcome? All right, so we'll jump back to question number one. How do Mallow's character and Mav's character know each other long before this group got together? So are you doing are you doing a pirate thing too? I was swashbuckler because my person who taught me how to fight was Captain Halfshell. Let's go. And we were in a seaside town. Let's go. I'm going to say you were the one that found me as a stowaway on the ship and instead of reporting me we became friends i love it question two to maddie maddie what mundane thing do you help mav's character with off of the battlefield all of the cooking Freaking love this. I I thought you were gonna give me some fucking fucked up answer because I was ready for it. <laughs> my my character is butterflies and rainbows almost literally. Okay, there's no fucked up character here. You're sweet, hundred percent sweet. Trust it. And low. What is a fear that Mav's character is trying to help you conquer? Water. That works. I don't like water. Well done. Well done. And uh, I just love it because it's it's a I love these guiding questions that are different for each background and not just generic guiding questions. Because with these answers, not only have we started to learn about the person whose section they're under, you all have developed your own character in the process just by answering this. Really cool. Mallow, why don't you take us next? All right. Let's roll a d4. Yes, please. Uh, that's going to be a three for the first one. That is Maddie. Uh, <laughs> Maddie, uh, what did I convince you to do that got us both in trouble? Yep. Roll it again. Uh, that's a one on the next one. That is Aaron's character. Uh, Aaron, uh, what have I discovered about your past that I hold secret from others? And then the last one is a two. Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> what are you desperately trying to teach me that you fear? I'll never understand. All right. First question, Maddie. And Mallow, what is something that Mallow can Mallow's character convinced your character to do that got you in trouble? Um, I am thinking that he convinced her to drink the entire keg of ale, and as a sorcerer, she lit the bar on fire. Fantastic! And again, just a reminder. Please do write down your answers that you give somewhere so that you remember these details that you come up with because these are 
starting to give you the framework for your character. Also, awkward big foot redeemed stretch. We've all been sitting for a little while. So get that stretch on. Feel good. Feel good. All right. Question two was to Aaron. Uh, what have I discovered about your past that I hold secret from others? That <laughs> even though he's a robot, he loves eating meat. Okay. Hi. It's fucked up. For what it's worth. It's <laughs> fucked up. But like secret secretly though. Like on the on the, on the down low. Yeah, just <laughs> you and your secret meat off in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. This is me and my sausages special time. Uh, <laughs> and with Mallow and Lauren. Lauren, what, what is... What are you trying to teach me? Dual finger twirl your blades, baby. I love that the mushroom character can do it. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah, and the ape character has less hand dexterity. <laughs> than the mushroom. <laughs> he's, he's a talker, Ben. He's a talker. We've all got our strengths. All I right. get really bored. <laughs> Maddie, roll me a d4. All righty. That is a one. You and Lauren. Uh, why do you trust me so deeply? D4? That's a two. You and Mav. Uh, Maverick, what did I do that makes you wary of me? One more. Uh, that is a two again. That is going to be you and Aaron. Uh, why do we keep our shared past a secret? All right. So let's start from the top there. Lauren. Why does your character trust Maddie's character so much? You're unexplainable like me. <laughs> All right. How are you doing that? Just kind of a, uh, <laughs> that whole group of weirdos that automatically trust yeah. each other. You're weird too. All right. Yeah. Second one was you and Mav, if I recall. Which is, what did I do that makes you so wary of me? And wary means I don't trust you, right? Yeah. Skeptical right. or cynical. Skeptical. Yeah, yeah. Jaded. Wary, yeah. Well, I'm a friend to all. Well, nope, nope, that is auto. No, come, go away, bud, bud. <laughs> go away, bud. Um. Well, because you helped me... You, when you've helped me with the cooking, um, your ingredient choices are very, very questionable. A lot of mystery meat. <laughs> totally valid reason. Mis mystery meat, you say? <laughs> I was about to say, are we thinking of the same character? <laughs> All right, and the last one, you and Aaron. Uh, why do we keep our pa our shared past a secret? Let's see. This is one you two can definitely brainstorm together since it's shared yeah. past. I was thinking something along the lines of in my character's history when he went the wrong way through the wastes, maybe something tied with that, something bad happened and it maybe was due to how we both did something. Alrighty. I have some ideas. I can send you them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. One more group of D4 rolls. Just gotta write it down before I forget everything. It's Aaron, who's up. Yeah. 
I don't do basic math, Ethan. We, you, you watch the show. I can't. You watch the show. <laughs> you know what happens. All right, we got three. Three. That is you and Mallow. Mallow, what favor have I asked of you that you're not sure you can fulfill? Okay, next roll. One. You and Lo. What weird hobby or strange fascination do we both share? And last one. Four. You and Maddie. What secret about yourself have you trusted only me with? All right. Let's start with the first one, you and Mallow. What favor have I asked of you that you're not sure you can fulfill? You do you do the wizard stuff, right? I do. So you've asked me to go back to my former uh, kingdom or community uh, for what should be an easy steal for a book or magical item. But because, and you don't know this, but because it's my former kingdom and community, I don't know. I love it. I have an idea for a magical item already. All right, second one, you and Lo. What weird hobby or strange fascination do we both share? I'm afraid of this. <laughs> you wanna like bugs? <laughs> we can collect locust shells. That sounds great. I'm super secret. No, what do you wanna collect? What do you wanna do? <laughs> you don't have to be weird. Bug shells are great. Can I eat the bugs? You can eat the bugs. <gasps> that could be the strange. You just suck out he the, bugs the bugs and I just collect the shell. Yep. That works. Bug meat. That's what he loves. Here, do you want to suck out its insides? I just want to keep its skeleton. Jesus Christ. And the last one for this evening. You and What's... Maddie. What secret about yourself have have you trusted only me with? Can I DM it to you? Sure can. Also, Lolo, I figured out how ours work together with your fear and how we how we what you told me to do. All right. That's how we got caught. So there's still some little details for people who want to discuss those privately. But now we have our backgrounds, connections, experiences. Have people thought of names? Yeah. All right. Let's go around and hear them. Well, I'm Manga. All right. Now I actually have to start making notes. Uh, Manga. It's the G-A-H. It's the A-H, Ethan, like my classical naming scheme. I'm just very nervous to be sounding like I'm mispronouncing manga the whole time. <laughs> Manga. <laughs> Manga. All right. You can call her Minga instead if that's helpful. That sounds like it it's a bad word worse. in something. Yeah, I feel like that is saying something bad. Uh, bad we'll go with Manga. Part. Uh, <laughs> all right. Who else? Me. Is that your name? No. Oh, <laughs> it's Finn with one N. All right. Finn Copyright purposes. played yeah. by Mav. Maddie, what about yeah. you? Uh, her name is Mammy. Mammy? M-A-M-I. Yep. Manga and Mammy. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I'm, I'm nervous about some things here. All right, Mammy. Um, all right. Uh, that is Maddie. And, oh, also, pronouns. Manga. I'm a lady, just a shishi. Or you can call me, uh... uh 
Finn? He, him. Got it. And Mammy. Uh, she. I don't know. Okay, Mammy is going to throw me off a little bit because it has some other uses as a name. Just for me, can we mess with the pronunciation a little bit? Or like, <laughs> I just- the, I'll change mine too. For, no, for him, got, for him I, I will say this, for him, please help him out. Please help him out. Cause I am dying on the inside. That's why I'm laughing so hard. Hey. I'm laughing really, really hard because it's funny to me, but I don't want him to get trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh -huh. ma'am, uh -huh. for having my back here. I'm like, I'm trying to like, it's your world there's, there's and fantasy. Wrestling. There's even some wrestling in there too. Yeah, you know? but. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll come up with a different one. I was just, as a member of the black, as a member of the card of the card member, a card came member of the black delegation. I am I'm intervening here to Thank help. You. Situation. I don't know these things. I live in a closet. No, it, it's but like southern. It, it's all it's yeah. southern stuff, especially southern black community. I will I will yeah. explain it to you after yeah. stream. Uh, uh -huh. it to you. Well, you spelled it M A M I, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's mommy, from. <laughs> Which has its own sexual connotation. Hey, mommy. <laughs> now, hey, I can do that one all day and actually be more okay with it. <laughs> Wait, your character's name is mommy? <laughs> I'm okay. We I'll put the mommy. emphasis on the second syllable, mommy. <laughs> mommy? <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's <laughs> Rhea. I was going to go with Rhea. Who cares? She, Sexy. She's a fairy. <laughs> mommy. All right, mommy. Maddie. Aaron, you got a name? This I've little got feller name. is named Otto. O T T O. Do you what? all like what? I swear. So, first of all, his bunny's name. Before, Otto. before I yeah, because <laughs> Mav is playing Otto in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight one. But one of my favorite ways this has happened in a similar way. So, low backstory: Aaron and Lauren and a number of friends played in a two and a half year. Rise of Tiamat campaign with me. And the Wood Elf Rogue was named Rayona. R-E-I. Uh, R-E-Y, excuse me. Rayona. Went by Ray. After that game was finished, I started a Curse of Strahd game with some other friends. And the Wood Elf Rogue, both female, was named Raylan. Shortened to Ray. <sighs> Oh, God. <laughs> Keeping them separate after a two and a half stronger. year long game. It, I, I'm, I only called her the wrong name once so far. And that is an achievement. But uh, Otto, it is. I love that. Is a great Thanks, name. Sarah. Aaron. And I I Mallow. I want you to know that. <laughs> oh, uh, I need uh, pronouns for Mami and Otto. She. Just she, her. Got it. Otto? Could be a he or a they, because they're a robot. He, they. All right. Mallow. Oru Kapu at your service. Okay, can you spell that? Yep. It's uh, first name is R O U X, like a Ru. Uh, second name is Kapu. C A P U. I love, love that, that Rue Kapoo. Love it. Oh my love god, it. that's so love cute. Um, right. I need Rue Kapoo merch instantly, immediately. <laughs> yeah, immediately. Um, pronouns? Uh, he, they. Got it. Rue Kapoo. Oh, gotta love a good roll. Rolls so well. All right, well, everybody, we have now successfully made our first Daggerheart characters on Demiplane for our one shot. So there's only one thing left to go over for tonight. And I haven't sent you all the invitation. So if you just want to look at the stream to get an idea. Um, one sec, let me get rid of this. So this is just a simple little first draft of an idea of how to represent hope, fear, and uh, the action tracker while we are playing, because those are going to be very important for everyone to be able to see. I will obviously replace these with 
the actual portraits now that I know what you all are playing. But everyone will have a hit, or usually used for hit points, but will have a resource counter that you can mess with for your hope that goes from zero to five. Very easy, so we can just come in here, or right over here, actually. We just click on them. When you gain a hope, you can just take that to one, and now one out of five. And I can keep track of my fear over here the same way so that you all can see how much fear, don't show me that, I currently have. The other thing I'm going to do is also make tokens using portraits that represent you all that can be copied and pasted so that, for example, ugh, I just copied and pasted this one. That's not how we do it. But every time Mav would go, he could just copy and paste and then drop it onto the onto or around the action tracker so that we see how many times each person has taken an action. Really quick little representation. We're probably not going to be using any battle maps for this one. I don't think that these situations are tactical enough to demand it. So we're just going to be using Roll20 really for this purpose while we play it, just so that we can have a public action tracker as the game intends. And I think, friends, that's everything. I think we're ready to roll. So we have Manga, Finn, Mami, Otto, and Rue Kapu ready to finally make it to the forest and see what adventures await them as we test out this dagger heart system. Speaking of, we will be doing the actual session, the one shot on Sunday. And I believe we said uh, four o'clock mountain. Was that what we had said? Because that was three o'clock uh, Pacific. Yeah. Cool. That's So we'll be starting at four mountain, five central, six Eastern and seven somewhere. I don't know where, but we'll be uh, playing through this pre-made one-shot with these characters that we've just gotten to make and meet all together. Incredibly excited about that. So please join us here on this channel or on our YouTube, Thousand Faces Cosplay, on Sunday for that. Before we head off, please don't go anywhere so that we can raid another channel, continue the TTRPG love. Even if you're going to be signing off, stick around at least to raid. It feels really good to see that bigger number. So before we sign off, though, going to go around, let everyone, if you're online and want to let people know where to find you, if you have anything big coming up, feel free to announce it, and then we will get the raid going. Thank you all so much for being here for this Mallow. Yes, you can find me everywhere uh, at the Mallow Man uh, on the socials and stuff like that. And then also, uh, Ethan and Lauren join me uh, every other Tuesday for my system, Identico, uh, where they play this some Tuesday. fun, fun characters. This Tuesday is our next stream coming up. So come join us on Sunday and then come back and join us on Tuesday because I guarantee we left it on a cliffhanger the last episode and it's going to be good. Yes, it will. Aaron. You are invisible online. I don't exist. I'm here in person. And if you need me, I will be playing auto next this Sunday. We can't wait to have you. Thank you for joining us for this stream, buddy. Maddie, what you got going on? Uh, and where can people find you? Well, you can find me on the whatever's under Mithril Cosplays. As far as what I have going on, not a lot. I'm going to Calgary Expo in a couple weeks, working on a few new cosplays for that, hopefully. So I also sell dice if anyone likes dice under Morag's Dice. Do check those out, genuinely. Got a pair myself uh, right over here, and they are very pretty. So, Mav, where can we find you? It's your boy, Mav. I'm one of the hypest people here on Twitch. Oh, leader of one of the hypest channels here on Twitch on Digital Clubhouse TV. I'm a variety streamer. I play a tons of different types of games. I'm currently working through Baldur's Gate 3, Act 2. Um, <laughs> um to, actually, Saturday, I am going to be live again at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're going to be playing, me and my friend uh, Liz are going to be finishing up Book of Love. Not Book of Love. Um, it takes two. It takes two. It takes two. Um, we're going to try and finish that up. And then I'll be here on Sunday. Um, my days are usually Monday, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. 
And I play a lot of Hell Divers too, and Fortnite. So those are my for current the, games that I'm playing right now. For democracy. Fuck democracy. Uh, <laughs> Manage this. And yeah. bring us home, Lauren. I'm online. Good luck uh, fighting that. Um, no, I'm Thousand Faces Cosplay. Um, and 95% Lauren. Uh, I'm crafting. I'm doing dumb gym shit. I'm constantly posting shit like, hey, you're enough. Because I need to hear those things too. And so you probably do too, right? So, um, uh, reminder, love yourself and be kind to others. Um, that's it. I'm going to go pet dogs. And like was said, not only can you find us here for this one shot on Sunday, but we'll be players, all Mallow, Lauren, and me, will be players on Identico Tuesday, every other Tuesday. I think we're at session like 18 now or something. Um, we've been going for a little while. So until... Okay. Sunday. Thank you all so much for being here for this very fun session zero. That was, I think that's a pretty good session zero or character creation system. I think that the website works smoothly. I think that everything was pretty well explained. The connections and experiences I think was really good at getting people to develop their characters as part of character creation. So, so far, so good. But until we see you on Sunday, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much for being here, friends. We appreciate you. Go hydrate. And let's raid this other channel, shall we? Come on. Get in on that raid. Get in on that raid, people. All right. Thank you all so much for being here. See you Sunday. Bye, friends. Bye.